Dr. Jacob Lauritsen, and this is Read, Write, and Sight, the show where I teach you how to read, write, and sight for your college classes. And this is the third video in a series on MLA style citation. MLA stands for Modern Language Association, and it's a style that's used predominantly in English classes and in like language classes, uh, humanities. Other than that, you're probably going to use other st citation styles, but if you're taking a college English class and you need to understand MLA, this is the video for you. In this video, we're going to talk about how to do a works cited page, specifically how to do a works cited page with print sources. In our next video, we're going to talk about electronic sources. So let's get started. There are three parts to formatting a paper for MLA. There's specific places where everything goes and what it looks like. Uh, that was the video one in the series. There are ways that you give credit for an author's words and ideas inside the text. So like if you quote, you summarize, you paraphrase, that's what you put at the end of the sentence. That was video two in the series. And then at the end of your document in your works cited page, um, it's also called a bibliography, or uh, references and other styles. In MLA, we call it works cited. It's where you include the works you've cited. So there's a bunch of information that needs to be included in in, in all this this detail at the end of the document, and it can be confusing. It can be kind of overwhelming, and so we're going to talk about it. All right. So I've got my screen up here. Um, one thing, if you didn't know already, in the most recent versions, starting with 2016, of Microsoft Word, you can actually just pull up an MLA template. So when I hit New, it opened up all my templates, I searched MLA, and then it brings up, oh, you want an MLA style paper? And it gives you some options. So I'm going to just click on this, not because I'm actually uh, going to do a whole paper, but uh, just to show you how to do it and to go to the end to its sample works cited page. So there's basically three kinds of information you want to include in a works cited entry. It's going to be its own separate page at the end of your document, like this. Um, just like every other page, it's going to have the author's last name, which would be you, and page number. And in the first video of the series, we showed how to do that. Then, and I don't know why this isn't centered, this should be centered. You have uh, the title centered, and then you have your different source information included. There's three kinds of information you need included in your source information. Each of these entries, we call a works cited entry. They should be organized alphabetically by the first uh, letter that shows up in the entry which is usually going to be an author's last name in most cases. So the three kinds of information you need in this order. You need the author or author's names starting with the last name, comma, then the rest of the name. Then you have the title or titles depending on the source there may be more than one title. We'll talk about that in a bit. Then you need the publication information. And depending on the kind of source that you are citing, that publication information can be wildly different. If you've taken a physical book that you're going to be citing, that information is going to be very different than a physical newspaper or a magazine or something like that. So let's talk about it. All right, so in this, this template that I brought up here, it's got author last name, comma, first name. So Let's say I'm citing me. So I'm going to put Lauritsen, comma, Jacob. Makes sense. It's that simple. If you have more than one author in MLA, then you would just continue, you know, and so-and-so. Or if you've got uh, three people, then you would put comma. But then after this, you'd, you'd put the names crew in normal order. You don't go the last first. You only do that for last name first to get everything alphabetical. Making sense? Hopefully. Okay, then you go to what this example calls title of the book being referenced. 
Now, if it's a book, titles of the big work, I'm trying to figure out how to explain this, um, title of the source is italicized. If it's a source that's part of a larger work, like it's a story that appears in a book that has lots of stories, or it's an article that showed up in a newspaper. The newspaper is the big source, and the article is a source among it. You with me so far? Okay. In MLA, if it's, say, a book, and it doesn't have you know specific things within it that are being, uh, separate sources within it that are being cited, like a, a chapter, a story, a poem, something like that, then the whole thing is just cited in italics, and you you capitalize, you know, nouns, um, verbs, things like that. Sometimes you leave out prepositions and articles, so words like of or the aren't necessarily capitalized unless it's at the beginning. You with me so far? Okay, but let's say, well, we'll use that in the next example. This example below, let's say it's an article inside a journal. Articles are part of a larger work, so they receive a different way to identify that, that title, and that's in quotation marks. It's not italicized, it's not bold, you just capitalize things the way you should. So, you see the two different examples? Okay, so you've got the, the, the work itself or an article inside of work. So here you see how there's two titles. All right, so... After that, you include the publication information. Now, depending on the kind of source, it's going to change which kind of publication information you use. But there are a lot of great sources out there on the Internet so that you know what you need to include. So, I'll show you what I like to use. I like to use, there's a, well, let's go to the Purdue OWL website, owl.english.purdue.edu. They have a good sample guide and a lot of great resources for MLA and for APA. So this is one of the more predominant sources out on the internet. They recently redesigned it. Um, but from here, you can go straight to the online writing lab to get free resources and information like MLA guide right here. So. This is going to show you uh, formatting and style, so you can see works cited, basic format, things like that, right? You're going to get some good examples. Okay, so you have online style generators. These are places like uh, um, EasyBib, things like that. I, I, I like what they can do, but if you've never learned what information should be and what it should look like, what, what should be in your works cited entry. I think these websites are a little bit dangerous. They're dangerous because um, you don't know if they're wrong or not. And I remember opening up in front of a class once and trying to, um, to do it and I, it was putting in the wrong information. So you, you might want to double check, but Websites like EasyBib, they're, they're great. You can make sure you're following MLA style 8 as opposed to 7, something like that. And it's going to guide you through, okay, what kind of source do you want? Well, I want a book. I want a print source. Cool. So, if you can give it something to kind of speed up the process, great. But let's say um, you don't have that information. And so I'm going to put the title. Let's say I'm going to do, I don't know. Moby Dick. All right. So I didn't even capitalize it. Let's see what they come up with. Now what they're doing is they're searching and they're going to help me figure out what information I need. They also can save yourself some time if it's a specific version of the book that you're using. But let's say they don't have my version. My version is super old or something, right? Okay. And then it's, it's it's got a guide down here to help you figure out what right information you need. That's awesome.
Now, if you're lucky and they have your specific version, that's going to line up with the right page numbers that you used in your um, index citation. Cool. You can click cite and you can go from there. And it's just, it knows what you need and you can go from there. But if it doesn't, you may have to type and it's going to guide you through. Oh, well, okay, what's the title of the book? Who's the publisher? What's yours published? Things like that. Um, if you look at previous styles, they really emphasize the city the book was published in and things like that. With so many things going digital, information like that is less important. Um, you just want to make sure that you are following the current style. Uh, so here I had clicked um, the 8th edition, which is 2016, uh, for MLA. So that's a quick rundown. Probably not even a good example. Let, let's back to our... Our MLA page here. Okay, in this example, they had city name. So let's say it's New York, colon, the name of the publisher. Let's say it's like Penguin, some big publisher like that, comma. Then you put the year, period, and then the type of medium like print. It can be really simple, right? In the past, we, we used to include um, some, some extra information, but this is really simple. Books are simple sources. If you're quoting something that's part of a larger work, you're going to need to include page numbers and things like that. Make sure you get a good guide. I can't cover everything. Um, what I use, I use the textbook that I use in my college classes is this one. It's the Everyday Writer, the sixth edition, the current edition, and it's got a whole chapter at the end of the book. What's important though is you need to make sure you know which kind of source you're citing. Is it, is it a collection? Is it uh, a newspaper of whatever, right? Make sure you know exactly which kind of source you're citing so that you can find a good guide to make sure you include the appropriate um, publication information. Authors' names and titles, they're consistent across any different kind of source, but here at the end it gets a little bit tricky um, when you get the right publication information. So that's a lot to cover. Um, so I decided to split this up into two videos. In the second video, we're going to dig deep into electronic sources. So if that will be helpful to you, make sure you check uh, the next video. But thank you for watching. I'm Dr. Jacob Lartz, and this has been Read, Write, Insight. I'll see you in the next video.